Good morning, and welcome to Woodlawn United Church's Worship Moment for Palm Sunday, a day that at least begins in celebration of the Holy Week. I've just got a couple of announcements to begin with today as I, as I meet with you. Uh, first off, I want to tell you about something kind of special that's happening next Sunday on Easter. Uh, my partner in crime, uh, Valerie, also a United Church minister who's been retired for a couple of years now, has agreed to do one of her dramatic monologues, which happened, uh, used to happen fairly frequently at when she was in, in ministry at Woodlawn with us. So next Sunday during the sermon time, she will be doing that. Also, I would like to remind you that uh, just either before or just after th this feed, there will be uh, some hymns, some Palm Sunday hymns for you to celebrate this, uh, this day with us, okay? Um, and that will be, in, you'll just need to click on a thing that called Palm Sunday hymns in the, in the stream, okay? So as we start today, as we often do, I'd like to start with the lighting of the Christ candle. You know, uh, sometimes when we're in the midst of stress, it really feels like the walls are kind of closing in on us, not just physically, but mentally as well, and we feel really, really isolated and alone. But uh, when we light the Christ candle, we calm ourselves, we center ourselves, we push back those walls a little bit, and we realize that we are never really alone, that God in Christ is with us. And so now I'm going to light the Christ candle and I'm going to give a couple of minutes of silence for you to actually have a chance to push away some of those things which might keep you from hearing the word today. so many things in our mind today, God, we invite you to be present to us. Actually, we are asking that you help remove the barriers that keep us from understanding that you are here. Open us up our hearts and our minds to hear your word to us today. Amen. And in along the same theme, uh, one of the things that people have been saying to me in this last little while is how much they are appreciating a new creed, something that we do almost every week at Woodlawn, but something which actually talks about the presence of God with us in life, in death, and life beyond death, and that we are not alone. So I invite you to join me, uh, those of you who know it and those of you who have it, to say a new creed with me. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, and to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, today's scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 21, the first 11 verses, and I'm reading from the New International Version, NIV. Uh, the little subtitle at the beginning of this says, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. But that's the question, isn't it? As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and at once you'll find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he'll send them right back to you. This will fulfill what the prophet has spoken. Say to the daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt and a foal of a donkey. 
So the disciples went and they did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and they placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. Now a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up and they asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Through the reading of this scripture, may you hear the word of God. Would you pray with me? Spirit of God, within whom we live and move and have our being, speak through my words and through these scripture, the word that you would have us hear. We ask this in the name of you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So, today is Palm Sunday, and if we were in the sanctuary, we would be having a choir and the children and the children do a procession down the center aisle, and the palm branches would be waving, and we would be singing maybe something like, Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Hmm. The service would start out full of energy and celebration, but it would end on a much gloomier note because Palm Sunday is actually act one of a four-act play that we call Holy Week. And Palm Sunday, the first act, is really a day of celebration and disillusionment. Disillusionment. And so it might have felt pretty gloomy at the end of it. And for a lot of us today, at this particular point in history, Palm Sunday may feel a little more gloomy than we're used to. You may not see this right away, but I want to suggest to you that even this part of this Holy Week faith story has some relevance to what we are experiencing right now in the world. On Wednesday, I'm going to be reflecting with you about the trashing of the temple by Jesus. Now, uh, when I was growing up, it used to be called the cleansing of the temple, and my ideas of that through some of the things I've been studying has changed dramatically over the year of what that was all about. You know, but it was probably one of the, the main things that kind of sealed the fate of Jesus in that last week, was going into the temple where all the rulers, the Jewish leaders were, and trashing the place. And then we have our Monday Thursday service, which this year will be by Zoom. So there will be a Zoom link sent out for you to click on to experience that on, at, on 7 o'clock on Thursday evening. And then the Good Friday service will be at 2 p.m. Uh, before we get to our uh, back here on Facebook Live, before we get to our Easter celebration. So I encourage you this year especially to take all of these services in and to re-experience that way of Christ, the way of the cross, and let it sink even deeper this year into your souls. You know, sometimes I, uh, I envision the church year with its cycles and things that we do over and over again. It's kind of like going around in a circle, and each year the ruts get a little bit deeper and sink into the ground and into us uh, in terms of what, what this is all about. You know, but... Back to today, back to Palm Sunday. The real question I have on this day is, how did those palm branch waving people saying Hosanna and celebration turn so very, very quickly into crucify him, crucify him? You know, how did that switch actually happen? Clearly, Jesus disappointed the expectations of the crowds. But it really wasn't his fault. It really wasn't his fault. Over and over and over again, he tried to tell him he wasn't that kind of Christ, that kind of Messiah, that kind of anointed one, the one that they were expecting. You know, he was a prophet. He was a son of man, but he was not a military leader like King David or like Caesar. He wasn't even in the same category. His kingdom wasn't of that type at all. He believed in only one king, one king being God. You know, listen, he would say to them. He would yell at them. He would say, open your ears. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm trying to say to you. 
frustration must have been a big part of what Jesus did, with his, especially with his disciples. And so he tried to enact it, you know. So he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. No horses, no chariots with spears and swords, but a donkey with palm branches. Now that should have been a clue. You know, Shannon did a great job of, of pointing to that in her children's story, in her, children, her, her story time this, this week. But listen, right from the temptation of Jesus in the desert uh, uh, by Satan to make Jesus the ruler of all the kingdoms of the world, Jesus says, no, that's not what I'm about. When Peter called him the Messiah and then got upset when Jesus started talking about his crucifixion and death, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Get out of my face. You know, this is not what I'm about. And yet the disciples on the road, even going into Jerusalem, would still be arguing about who was going to sit at his right hand and his left hand, you know, uh, when they took over from the Romans and when they came into their own kingdom. The disciples and the crowds just wouldn't listen. They knew who Jesus was, even if he didn't know himself. You know, their understanding only really started to change a little bit when he gets arrested and didn't put up a fight. And then they either became afraid and took off, or they got angry like the crowds did, and eventually were shouting that crucify him. You know, I, I love the line from Jesus Christ Superstar. I think it's Judas saying to Jesus, you know, and they'll hurt you when they find they're wrong. You know, and that's what happens. They hurt, they hurt Jesus when they found they were wrong. So my question for us today is this, are we any different from those first disciples? Are we listening and understanding really any better than they did? How does who you think Jesus is and what his mission and ministry is about square with what he actually says and does in the Gospels? You know? Are we listening to him or to what centuries and layers of theologies and ministers have told us that Jesus is all about? You know? you know, was Jesus really trying to commit suicide by cop to pay for the sins of the world? You know, or did he have something else in mind that he was really trying to do? You know, I remember the particular point in my life where I said, "Well, if he wasn't trying to pay for the sins of the world, what was he trying to pay for? What was he trying to do?" It was like all of a sudden I had to relook again. Will we get angry and desert him if we find out that we're wrong? Or will we just continue to believe the way we always have, despite what the words and Jesus, uh, 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 words and teachings of Jesus are telling us? Palm Sunday really is about taking a fresh look at Jesus while trying to keep from pre to all of these questions. Now, I still can remember in the early 1970s, going to university and studying religion. And one of the questions was, what is the main theme in the teaching of Jesus? And hey, I didn't even have to look in the Bible. I just wrote down my answer. Jesus was to die on the cross, uh, to, to forgive our sins so that we can go to heaven, you know, if we believe in him. You know, and I, I failed that paper. The professor says, well, you need to read what the Gospels say. And the main theme in the teaching of Jesus there was something he called the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And this was neither about a renewed kingdom of Israel with a king like David, nor about paying for the sins of the world to ensure forgiveness and entry into heaven. What Jesus was talking about was God's rule. What, what the world would be like if God was in charge and everybody paid attention to the one God and we all realized that we were all interconnected, it was an egalitarian and inclusive world where God was the ruler and no one was left out, where there was peace and justice, justice in the sense of everybody getting what they needed. You know? Now, what's all this got to do with this time of pandemic? I don't know for sure, but some of the questions that have been coming to me as I've been preparing for this this week are these. When I hear reports of poor people, not only in India, but even those living on the streets in our own cities here, when they have to choose between self-isolation and going out and working or going to find food, 
it makes me wonder where some of those viruses come from and why they spread so quickly in those places. When I listen to people like one of my colleagues talk about places in the world that have really poor infrastructure for sanitation as a breeding ground for these viruses, where a rich elite can live in luxury and the poor live in slums without proper sanitation around them, it makes me wonder if the vision of the kingdom of God isn't relevant to our situation today in the world. Could it be that if we started to act and make decisions as individuals and as governments, like we are all interconnected, some of these bad things might not happen? I mean, we are all interconnected, right? I mean, we see that now. This virus is not caring about who is rich and who is poor, who's living in, in the States and who's living in Canada, who's living in India. It's everybody, you know? I think it's worth thinking about and paying attention to the life and words of Jesus and not just his death and resurrection. It might be just what we need as we think about how we're gonna put all these pieces back together again, socially and economically and everything else when, we, when, we, when all of this is over. So the question for me on Palm Sunday are this, who really is Jesus? What was his mission and ministry all about? And are we able to consider that like those first disciples? Are we able to consider that like those first disciples and the Palm Sunday crowds? We might just have them wrong. Would you pray with me? Loving Creator God, you whom, in whom we know in Jesus, we confess that like the crowds and those first disciples, we don't listen to you very well. Like Peter, we would prefer that you didn't talk about self-sacrifice and death and that we need to follow you on our way of our own cross. We confess that in our arrogance, we too think our and purpose and what your purpose is better than you do. We confess that we talk about courage, but often we are overcome with fear and we desert you. Forgive us, we pray. Open us up to your way, your truth, and your life. We ask this in the name of Jesus and for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. The Christian faith is about reconciliation and the God that we follow and know through Jesus is the one of love and care and compassion and grace and forgiveness. God wraps us in a blanket of grace and forgiveness and understands our weaknesses as well as our strengths. God is with us as we continue along this journey together and thank God for God's grace and forgiveness because we make mistakes all along the way, and God still loves and cares for us. Now, if we were in the sanctuary right now, this would be the time of the service where we would be offering uh, an option to make an offering as a regular part of our response to God for all that God has done for us. I want to thank all those who give in various ways to the mission and ministry of Woodlawn United Church through their dollars and through their actions and their skills. Together we're continuing, I think, to support Christ's ministry and the mission in the world. Now certainly there are some who are finding it difficult to do that at this time and I, we completely understand that. But if, if your heart wants to make an offering and you're finding it difficult to do so, we invite you to connect through to our web, web page and you'll be, have some options there. So my commissioning today to you is this. As I said on Wednesday, this is a time to get out your Bibles, reread this story of the Gospels, including the story, especially maybe this week of that last week from Palm Sunday through to Easter Sunday. And as you do, May you have fresh eyes in seeing and understanding it. And as you do, may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you today and always.